2008 seems like a lifetime ago, but I still remember walking into a card shop for the first time and being mesmerized by what competitive Yu-Gi-Oh was. Before that, I had only gotten a taste of what it was when I used to play on the floor with fellow players at my local Books A Million of all places. Welcome to a time in Yu-Gi-Oh that I hold near and dear to my heart. I went to my first locals two weeks before the fusion deck was changed to the extra deck, and I've been playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh ever since. It almost brings a tear to my eye as I think about it all. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Avery, and this is a Dark Arm Dragon Return and Teledad format spanning all the way from 2008 to 2009 retrospective. Get ready to rev it up to the newest dueling dimension, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, and blow away the competition with the first turbocharged booster pack, the Duelist Genesis. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, TCG available now. So let's start with 2008 and just push on from there. The beginning of this year saw the continuation of the late 2007 meta with Perfect Circle Monarchs being dominant. But zombies and, of all things, burn actually were a thing, but they took a backseat to gadgets. Perfect Circle Monarchs had gotten a boost in early 2008 with the release of Caius the Shadow Monarch, which, along with Rise of the Storm Monarch, served to replace the old monarchs such as Thestalos and Zaborg. The introduction of Caius and his ability to banish any card made him the perfect counter to both zombies and stall, with zombies relying on their monsters going to the graveyard and stall relying on the opponent not being able to get past their various defensive cards. Gadgets, on the other hand, served as the anti-meta to Perfect Circle Monarchs, while Perfect Circle was largely reliant on utilizing the graveyard, anti-meta gadgets focused on maintaining card advantage and using cards such as Banisher the Radiance, Dimensional Fissure, and Macrocosmos to prevent the opponent from using the graveyard. This strategy was particularly powerful against Perfect Circle because of how much the Destiny Hero Engine and Light and Darkness Dragon relied on going to the graveyard to be fully effective. And if you've been keeping up with these retrospectives, you know that Light and Darkness Dragon is one of my favorite cards of all time in Yu-Gi-Oh. I still do this day love that card. The next format shift of 2008 was sparked by the introduction of a new booster set, Phantom Darkness. This format was the infamous dad format, named after the boss monster from Phantom Darkness, Dark Arm Dragon. The first form that the deck took was Return Dad. Now this deck focused on the titular Dark Arm Dragon, as we just mentioned, and the powerful dark attribute focus support that was released in the Phantom Darkness booster set. Some of the support included a lure of darkness, Dark Greffer Armageddon Knight, and Dark Lord Zerato, which was then also used alongside the already popular Destiny Hero engine. The deck relied on getting Dark Arm out as fast as possible to control the board, which was extremely easy, considering how much draw power the deck had with Destiny Draw, Allure of Darkness, and Destiny Hero Disc Commander, a card that was not once per turn at the time. The deck would then be able to easily OTK the opponent by using Return from the Different Dimension to summon back all of the banished dark monsters that have been used to fuel Dad's effect. Does that sound similar to Dragon Ruler format? Because it should. It goes to show that some cards creep up as problematic cards even years later. The first SJC that the deck was legal for saw positive results for it, but Dark Arm Return didn't utterly dominate the event, with six samurai actually taking first place. Now the deck would take over more definitively with the March 2008 Forbidden List, which limited Rise of the Storm Monarch and semi-limited Light and Darkness Dragon, if you can even believe it, two hits that crippled the main core of the Perfect Circle Monarch deck. Now because of the elimination of Perfect Circle and the severe gap in consistency and power between Return Dad and Gadgets, Return Dad was left as the only deck in the competitive meta. The only other decks that managed to maintain a foothold in this format were Six Samurai and the Shadow Priests of Ohm FTK, also known as Kaiba Control. Six Samurai as a deck was largely played more at the local level. However, it did see two successful tops at large events due to the deck's ability to both flood the field and have a variety of answers to different situations. In this way, the deck was not entirely dissimilar to the Warrior Toolbox deck from 2006, except with more consistency. The other deck from this format was the Shadow Priests of Ohm FTK and was seen as a combo OTK slash FTK deck. The combo revolved around using a combination of Shadow Priests of Ohm, Dimension Fusion, Spell Economics, and Dark Magician of Chaos.
Chaos. The combo was focused around getting both Dark Magician of Chaos and Shadow Priestess out on the field at the same time. Shadow Priestess could then tribute Dark Magician of Chaos to burn the opponent, causing Dark Magician of Chaos to be banished. Dimension Fusion would then be used to summon it back to the field, and Spell Economics would bypass the life point caught of Dimension Fusion, allowing it to be used continuously. The final piece of the combo was Demox Effect, which would recycle the Dimension Fusion, allowing the loop to be established. However, this only lasted until the release of Light of Destruction two months later. This booster set introduced the first two fully competitive archetypes to the TCG, Gladiator Beasts and Light Sworn. Now, technically, Gladiator Beasts had been released in 2007, but they didn't receive the support to make them competitive until the release of Gladiator Beasts Geyserus and Light of Destruction. Light Sworn also presented a significant threat in the meta because of the sheer power of Judgment Dragon, otherwise known as JD. JD served as a much easier monster to get out than Demise King of Armageddon, while also having 3,000 attack points, making it stronger than all of the other boss monsters in the meta at the time, including Dark Arm Dragon. JD allowed Lightsworn to compete against the dominance of Dark Arm Dragon as a boss monster, while Gladiator Beasts had good survivability and consistency that allowed them to outlast Return Dad. Because of the consistency and staying power of Gladiator Beasts, they ended up splitting the top of the meta with Return Dad, leaving Lightsworn as a minor contender in the meta. The deck had been released in Gladiator's Assault in late 2007, but Light of Destruction gave the deck Gladiator Beast Geyserus, a fusion that was able to destroy multiple cards on the board with its effect on summon. Because of the multi targeting nature of the card, its generic use, and the ease with which it could be repeatedly summoned, Geyserus made Gladiator Beast a formidable deck. An emergency ban list was also released in May of 2008, addressing the extreme consistency of the Ohm FTK combo and the dominance of Return Dad. In this list, the only changes were Dimension Fusion being banned, Return from the Different Dimension being limited, and Allure of Darkness being semi-limited. The resulting meta now converged around Gladiator Beast, which would prove themselves as the strongest deck in the meta against Against Light Sworn and a weakened Return Dad. Gladiator Beast would show this by consistently winning the next six Shonen Jump Championships. This would all get upended, however, with the release of a brand new summoning mechanic, Synchro Summoning. Synchro Summoning was released with the August 2008 booster set, The Duelist Genesis, to coincide with the new anime, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, which to this day a lot of people debate is the best Yu-Gi-Oh! series. The new mechanic allowed for a new type of main deck monsters called Tuners. You may have heard of them, maybe not, I could be wrong, to be used with other monsters by adding their levels together in order to summon powerful Synchro monsters from the newly rebranded quote-unquote Extra Deck, previously called the Fusion Deck. However, at this point, the pool of available synchro monsters was very small, and there were not a very wide pool of available tuners with which to make these synchro monsters. Keep in mind that when we first got tuners, we had some decent options like Cree Bonds and Plague Spreader Zombie, but we didn't have really broken things like Debris Dragon. Those came later. However, in spite of this, the Dark Arm Dragon deck would quickly adapt to the new mechanic, shifting into the infamous Tier Zero Teledad variant of the deck. Now, Teledad, also known as Teleport Dark Arm, was a variant of the Return Dad deck that added in the Destiny Hero engine and Cree Bonds to enable easy synchro plays. The Teleport portion came in with Emergency Teleport, which was used to special summon Cree Bonds from the deck, making synchro plays very easy to perform. Gladiator Beast continued to get tops throughout September, especially at SJC Baltimore, the first large event after the release of Synchros in the September 2008 ban list. Although Dad was semi-limited in this list along with Disc Commander, Premature Burial, and Demok being banned, the force of Synchros would prove to be way too strong. Teledad didn't end up winning the first event it was legal for, that honor instead going once again to Gladiator Beasts. But the new form of the deck still managed to take over half of the top 16 spots. After this, the meta soon started to solidify around Teledad as the best deck, while Light Sworn, Gladiator Beast, and a new version version of zombies that use synchros managed to sneak in sparse tops during this format. Teledad was undoubtedly the top deck through the rest of 2008. The new deck out of these, Zombie Synchro, was a variant of the popular Teledad deck, combined with parts of the zombie deck that had been in the meta in late 2007. This variant of the deck focused on utilizing Plague Spreader Zombie, a zombie type tuner monster that could special summon itself from the graveyard in conjunction with Card Safe Return, which had been limited in the September 2008 list, and Burial from the Different Dimension. It also took advantage of two new zombie support cards that had been released in Phantom Darkness, Mizuki and Goblin Zombie. Now, Mizuki was the more prominent of the two, allowing for even further graveyard revival than the deck already was capable of. Although the deck was larger the same as Teledad, it could arguably generate more card advantage due to the easy looping power of zombies and the draw power of card of safe return. 
The beginning of 2009 saw the continued dominance of Teledad, but the only Shonen Jump championship at the beginning of the year was SJC Houston in 2009, also known as the quote-unquote forgotten Shonen Jump. It earned this name because Upper Deck Entertainment, the original distributors of Yu-Gi-Oh! and the TCG, were in legal proceedings with Konami during this time. The legal proceedings were over Upper Deck having distributed counterfeit cards to a third-party company. Because of this turn of events, Konami sought to repossess the game's distribution from Upper Deck. This tournament was most notable for both having very little coverage among the common metagame reports at the time, and also for introducing a new card into the main deck staple set, Royal Oppression. Royal Oppression had been an extremely common side deck card since Special Summoning had become a more prevalent mechanic back in the early GX era, but it had never been commonly ran in the main deck before this point. SJC Houston saw more than half of the top 16 deck lists running at least one copy, sometimes even two, of Royal Oppression in the main deck. This was primarily because of a shift in how the game would be played. Due to the sheer power level of boards that could be established by a deck such as Teledad, being able to reinforce that board by locking the opponent out of being able to do the same made Roll Oppression something of a capstone for many powerful fields. Think of it like a... Uh, Imperial Order before Imperial Order came back to the game with its errata. The lawsuit ended in the early spring of 2009, and ownership of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG was transferred to Konami, meaning Konami from here on would control the game worldwide. Along with this change came a somewhat radical shift in prizing for tournaments, with Konami generally giving less prizes than Upper Deck Entertainment did. By the time the competitive scene resumed as normal, the March 2009 ban list had been released, which saw Dark Arm Dragon, Emergency Teleport, Gladiator Beast Bestiari, and Goyo Guardian all limited, with Destiny Draw, Destiny Hero Malicious, and Allure of Darkness all being semi-limited. The ban list completely neutered almost every part of the Teledad deck, excising it from the meta entirely. The deck lost its consistency with the hits to Emergency Teleport, Allure of Darkness, and Destiny Draw, as well as its ability to repeatedly and easily generate advantage with the use of Destiny Hero Malicious, as well as losing its main two power plays of having multiple Dark Arm Dragons on the board at once and using Goyo Guardian to easily control the game. The egg Exit of Dark Arm Dragon centered decks from the meta allowed Synchro to truly take hold in the competitive scene as its own thing and not just an extension of the previous era of the game. This shift in both of the ownership for the TCG and the general meta would mark a change in the tides for Yu Gi Oh!, being the point where the quote unquote new Yu Gi Oh! is said to have started, otherwise known as modern Yu Gi Oh!. This new modern Yu Gi Oh! would be a much faster game focused around summoning monsters out of the extra deck and using intentionally designed archetypes of cards instead of cobbling together a variety of generic good cards. The game would also start to see a surge in new players during this time period, myself being one of those players, with many players getting into the game during this period and causing the seeds of the present Yu-Gi-Oh! community to start to form. I would also like to add one little memory that I have of this time, and that was Crush Card Virus. I remember the saying was in my local area of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! back during this time was that if you had a Crush Card Virus, you were guaranteed to top an event. Because Crush Card Virus back during this time, it didn't have its errata. It was the old school Crush Card Virus as broken as can be. And I remember it was over $1,000 and it was at one. But if you could get your hands on a copy, you were guaranteed to top nearly any event that you went to. And this can actually be seen in some deck lists. You can see who had access to Crush Card Virus and who didn't because you could only get it as a prize card, I believe, at the time. I, I think it was also in a duelist pack later, but having access to that card just meant you were going to win the game no matter what. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed this retrospective. If you did, be sure to leave a like. I really enjoyed taking this trip down memory lane. One of my favorite formats of all time is September 2009 because of the burial dad deck that I played at the time that played three Necrogardena, three burial from the different dimension, being able to send back the Necrogardenas and stop attacks. It, it was a really fun time. I actually have that deck profile on the channel as well, so be sure to go and check that out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.